Hello Rutbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a very special DayZ video. I was going to be doing you a guide just like I did for Conan Exiles. Everything you don't get told by the game. However, DayZ has got so much it doesn't tell you. There is no tutorials for this game. A lot of it is going to be trial and error. A lot of it is going to be you looking stuff up. I am going to make that life a little bit easier. So I'm going to be breaking it down. It's not going to be one big massive video. I'm going to be breaking it down to small ones. Today, we're going to be focusing on cooking, food, and basically how to get through a night time. Spawning on a server is like the world's worst nightmare in day Z. You can't see shit and you can't get any decent loot, but there is a way for you to succeed, and this is how. As soon as you spawn, use one of your flares and go up to a tree. Make sure you've got your knife and grab some bark from that tree. This is gonna start off as your kindling for any type of fire, and you'll soon be able to light as many torches as you want. This way, you won't have to worry about them flares running out, although they do last a long time. You can expect a flare to last around 15 minutes or so. They've also got little glow sticks that are in the game too, and they don't give as much light, but they can give you a tiny bit. They also last a little bit longer. So drop your flare on the floor by holding the square button and then go ahead and start getting at that tree for that bark. Next you need to find a bush, we're gonna need some sticks. These are the types of bushes you're looking for. Don't obviously try hacking away a tree, you'll only get bark with that knife. Once you've got some sticks though, now we can start making our torch. Just a little FYI, the actual current length of night time hasn't been fully tested, but what I can tell from playing for the game on PS4 in the last few days, it lasts around a full hour. If you take into account dusk and dawn, it's usually around two hours between daylight. So you have got a long time on these servers if it is night time. So you've got your long stick, which you can also make into a spear if you get hold of some bones. Now you can craft your torch just by hovering over it with a cloth and pressing the combine button. You can make torches with short sticks as well. In fact, once you've got some smaller sticks, you can make yourself a fire. Now, normally you're not gonna necessarily need a fire unless you've somehow managed to get some meat and you need to cook some up. I would suggest you just keep making torches until you get more advanced in the game. But if you really wanted to, you could make a campfire. Now, campfires are obviously static. People will be able to come up on you, but the chances are people are also not running around in the nighttime too much. Only the noobs around the sea areas on the coast and hardcore players like you who aren't scared of the dark. So, small stick in your hands, go over to the rags, hover on it and press the circle button. Even if it doesn't show, it should combine to make a torch or the campfire. You can cycle through the recipes by tapping the R2 button once, or if you hold the R2 button, that's how you actually craft your torch. If this is a bit basic for you, remember, I'm trying to show you everything that Daisy doesn't, and Daisy really doesn't give you any clues about some of this stuff. So I am gonna be going through some of the simpler stuff, but hopefully I'm gonna be teaching you a few things about cooking and what you can also be doing with the nighttime. So one thing you may not realize is that you can refuel your torches. A lot of times I've seen torches just left all over the floor because players haven't just been refueling them, they've been having to make brand new ones, which takes up more resources. You're gonna need cloth. I had to sacrifice my shirt here. I made it into cloth so that I had more to refuel my torch. There's one last thing you can do with torches. You can actually add fat to it. This prolongs the life of the torch. You used to be able to get resin from trees, but so far on the PlayStation 4, I've not been able to do that with any of the tools that I've come across. But basically, put your torch on the floor and then have the lard or the fat in your hand and you can upgrade your torch and it will just basically give it a hell of a lot more of a burn. You can also extinguish your torches as long as you've got some water. If you've got water in a bottle, it will give you the option to distinguish it as long as you pop it in your hand and then type the combine button on the water bottle and it should extinguish it if you want to save it for later. So you've made your torch, but how do you light it? What if you don't have any matches? Well, hopefully you've still got that flare to hand because you can hover over the flare with your torch and that's how you ignite your torches. But don't worry, even if you don't have a flare, maybe you're late one in the game and you have no matches whatsoever, there are other ways for you to light torches and make sure that you're keeping yourself warm by campfires. It's so pretty simple really, grab yourself some small sticks, grab yourself some bark and you'll be able to make yourself a hand drill kit. 
This is basically a fire starter for any type of fire that you need, whether it's for your crafting fire, whether it's for your torch, this is how you can light things if you don't have any matches or any sort of lighter. I'm crafting the fireplace right now, I've got my short stick and I'm combining it with any rag and this is how you're going to make your fire. When placing it, it can be really buggy. If you're doing this in the dark, it's really hard to do, but you can see I can scroll through the recipes by tapping the R2 button. Once you've decided what you're making, you can then place it. Now placing it, you just need to tap it once and then move it around. There should be a little grey outline around the fire. It can be really hard to see. Again, if it's in the dark, this is why it's so hard to place them. You might think the game's bugged, but it really is just a case of it not working that well. Once you've got somewhere you want to place it, then hold the RT button and it should place it where you want. Grab your hands, drill kit, go over to the fireplace and ignite it. Simple. You'll only get a few embers of a flame, you're going to have to make sure you've got fuel to put into the campfire and that can be twigs, it can be bark, it can be cloth, pretty much anything you can think of to get it in. That's the kindling, that's how you start fires. There are other ways to start fires as well, like I said, using any sort of natural flame. It is a realistic game, think realistically how you create fire, that's pretty much how you can do it in DayZ. So, Make sure you've got plenty of fuel, small sticks, they'll go in, or you can get firewood if you've got an axe and you chop down a tree. Now be careful though, with campfires, you'll actually get hurt if you hover over one too close. And let's move on to getting yourself some meat and cooking it. I've got this lovely little goat. Bye bye goat. What we're going to do, we're going to cook him up after I've carved him. It only takes about three, maybe four hits with a torch on an animal like this. So you can go ahead and hunt in the dark if you want. Pop in my torch down. I'm going to use my knife now and we're going to basically just quarter this goat up. Once it's done, you're left with some lovely choice cuts of meat, specifically chosen because they're outdoor bread, they're organically fed, it's really ethical meat. No, no, okay, maybe it's not. But anyway, that's not the point. Let's cook these lovely juicy bits of meat up. I've got my fire axe out, I'm getting some wood. I want to make sure I get some actual wood for burning, not just kindle like bark. We'll get to that in a second, but basically get a long stick, you're gonna need another one, grab your piece of meat, and even if it doesn't come up with the combine button, there's no red circle highlighting saying that you can make it, go over to the meat once more and just press the circle button. It will work, you will combine the meat, and it will go into basically the inventory of the long stick. That's what that gray little circle is for, just underneath it. We're basically gonna be cooking all this meat on this stick on an open fire. There are other ways that you can cook, and I'm gonna go through them too, but probably much more advanced in a bigger, bigger video. But I will go over skimming what you can make. You can basically overcook your meat, you can burn it, you can boil it, you can dry cook it as well. There's lots of different ways to make lots of foods. But sticking to the meat on a stick, literally make sure you've got your flames and your fire going and it will give you the option to burn it and you can get some nice little screenshots for the video. If you happen to have a pot to hand, you can also cook in a pot. You can boil meat, so as long as the pot is full of water. Even if you don't have any water, you can also still cook the meat. You can call it dried cooked meat by simply having it in the pot on a fire without any fat or any water. That's how you can cook some meat too. Just don't overcook your meat. You'll literally see it change color on the stick. Obviously when the circle goes all the way full as well, that's when it's cooked. Don't cook it any more than that, otherwise you will risk it getting burned. You can see it's changed to a nice golden brown color. You can also leave the meat and it will decompose. Not a good idea as this can give you diseases and make you unwell. Alongside goat, you can also hunt boar. You can take chicken, cow, deer, human and mouflon steak pig steak, sheep steak, and you can eat wolves. You can bake lots of foods, you can bake lots of fruits and veg as well, and it can be better for you. Doing this gives you more calories and it fills up your stomach for longer. One thing to avoid though, don't boil any fruit or veg and don't dry it. Generally, you won't get as much calories anyway, and it also doesn't increase any of your stomach. It basically means that you're gonna be hungrier quicker. The only exception to this, funnily, is if you burn fruit and veg, you'll actually get just as much calories from it and it will fill your stomach up a lot more. And lastly, the same goes for mushrooms. If you find any mushrooms out there, go ahead and bake them, boil them, try it out, experiment. 
The best steak to eat is cow steak, followed by sheep, then mouflon, then goat, deer, wolf, pig, human, boar, and finally chicken. Chicken will give you the least amount of calories. They all fill your stomach up exactly the same amount though, so don't worry too much. If you're hungry or just looking to last in meals, go ahead and eat whatever. The only real bonus to boiling any meats is that you get more water out of it. So when you are doing it, you're filling up your water bar as well as your hunger. So that might be something worth doing if you are somewhere where there isn't a lot of water or you can't find any cans of soda. Dried meats are gonna last longer, but they don't give you nowhere near as much energy and also they don't give you nowhere near as much water while you're eating them too. So be careful of these. Also do remember carrying lots of raw meat around means the zombies are going to be able to get you a lot from further away. They definitely will come after you, they've got much more of a range if they smell that you've got raw meat on you. A few other pointers before I finish off though, guts can be used to make fishing rods, you can also eat them but it's not advisable because they can make you sick. And make sure you differentiate between guts and small guts. Small guts you can't make into a part basically rope or for a fishing rod. You can only eat these. There are other cooking utensils, but these can be really hard to get hold of, particularly also to use. A gas stove sounds like a good idea, it's pretty small, but you're also gonna need a gas canister before cooking on it. You're then gonna need a pot or a frying pan also. So carrying all of that stuff around really isn't advisable. I would definitely only bother keeping that sort of stuff when you've got much more space. Maybe you've built a base or you've got yourself a car. The only benefit is you don't need to worry about light matches with a gas stove, it automatically does it, but like I said it's really not advisable to be using this method unless you really have got somewhere safe to put it all. If you manage to find a cooking pot, absolutely keep it though, you can fill it with water and so you can use it as a drinkable sauce and it can be used for cooking. You can use a cooking pot on any type of open fire, so if you've got a campfire, if you've got a barrel fire or if you've got a fire inside one of them houses, yes you can use the fireplaces in the houses if you've got the right stuff. I will be covering that separately in a more advanced video showing you guys how to basically grow your own plants and then go ahead and make lots of different types of foods with them. And that is pretty much it for this little guide in flames, torches and cooking. It is a bit basic but there are so many people commenting they just don't know how to do stuff so far. So I hope it's helped you out, make sure you stay tuned, I'll be coming up with you more videos talking about what you need to know about DayZ and obviously my Let's Plays are continuing. Thanks a lot for the sport, it's been popping off lately and I'll see you ratbags for another DayZ tutorial very soon.